Guys, this is the tutorial on co-optation of IOTA. So co-optation of IOTA can be divided into two large subgroups. One is the one which present in a neonatal period with a very sick neonate or the ones which present itself in later in the childhood or even in adulthood. Now, so the deoxygenated blood come into the right atria, cross the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, get pumped across the pulmonary artery, goes into the left and right pulmonary artery. In fetal life, you also have this structure here called the ductus arteriosus. Gets oxygenated and comes back into the left atria through the four pulmonary veins. From the left atria, it goes across the mitral valve into the left ventricle, pumped across the ascending aorta, comes over there, goes into the right common carotid, right subclavian, the left com common carotid, left subclavian. Now, when we get here, there's an obstruction here. So the blood cannot really go past that into the descending aorta. So what would happen? You would have hypoxia to all the organs distal to that. So hypoxia in your gut, in your kidneys, in your liver, you will have an aerobic respiration and lactic acidosis. So result your pH would be low, you're very acidotic and you're very sick like a septic child. If you feel the femoral pulses, they would be weak or absent. So that's how you would differentiate it from a child with septicemia. Now you can see that uh, first few hours of life to first few days of life, they're protected by the structure here called the ductus arteriosus. So this would keep the blood supply going to the distal part of the body. But once this closes after a few days of birth, the child would become symptomatic. So if you have an infant coming, for example, at seven days of life, looking profoundly unwell with weak femoral pulses, pale, think about coarctation. So this is the neonatal type. Now, obviously, if you think about this being really mild, the narrowing being really mild, it may not press until later because it might allow blood to go past this adequately, at least to begin with. They may not present until later on in childhood or some cases even in adulthood. And that's particularly true in some cases of coarctation. For example, you have coarctation there and you have some collaterals bypassing it. So if you take an example of someone with the collaterals, then they don't present until later on as an adult. So the variation is huge. We looked at the neonatal presentation. So let's uh, go in a little bit detail on the neonatal presentation and how to manage them. So you have, uh, let's do another heart over here. First branch, second branch, third branch, coarctation over there. It's your ductus arteriosus. So the ductus arteriosus is key. So as soon as you diagnose these patients, even clinically, prior to getting the echocardiogram done to confirming the diagnosis, your key aim should be to keep the ductus open. So give prostin. That's prostaglandin, it's given intravenously. And then stabilize the child. How do you stabilize them? You have to ventilate if it's a profoundly sick child. You have to fluid resuscitate, the child's dehydrated and in shock. You have to give ionotropes if the blood pressure is low, stabilizing and then sending the child across for surgery. Let's look at a real life example now. I drew the picture earlier. So this is your first branch, your second branch, your third branch. I said the coarctation is usually around here where the duct is open, but it could be anywhere. For example, let's look at this particular case. It's nice and patent over here, but when it comes over there, you can see a little bit of narrowing there. So you can see over there, there's a discrete so this newborn was uh, found to have weak femoral pulses but was otherwise well and i was asked to do an echocardiogram and the echocardiogram shows this so this is what we call the arch view so essentially uh, a replica of that in real life so you can see it's nice and widely patent over there so first branch second branch third branch all widely patent but when you come to the descending iota quite distally you can see this discrete shelf over there somewhere over there you can see a discrete shelf and uh, that's where the coarctation is and you can see that you know blood can't actually come past that because it's so narrow there compared to there so the
coarctation can be literally anywhere and in this particular case the duct would open somewhere around here so even if you actually gave prostaglandin it's unlikely to make any massive difference but we would always give prostaglandin because it might actually have an effect on the ductal tissue and help it release so we did give prostaglandin in this case so what I'm trying to say is you could get a very sick neonate or a reasonably stable neonate with uh, weak femoral pulses so you have to have a high index of suspicion to diagnose them if this child was uh, left on its own it might have become really symptomatic in a few days time when it was three or four months old and would have come in in a very unwell state so now let's look at the treatment option available so we know that uh, the coarctation as we saw in the example I played earlier coarctation was there so in this case it's very straightforward the surgeon would uh, do a lateral thoracotomy incision go through the side cross clamp there resect that segment out and then re -anastomos. So that's called resection and end-to-end -end anastomosis. So that's the favored approach these days. So this can be done off bypass because obviously your brain's protected there, so you don't need to go on cardiopulmonary bypass. If you have an infant who has hyperplastic arch, for example, in which case the arch is much, much narrow, for example, something like that. So the arch is very, very narrow and then you have a coarctation distally everything is okay so in this case you have to augment the arch so simple end-to-end -end anastomosis is not going to cure the problem it will take the obstruction away but this arch is not just big enough to do the job so the surgeon will have to augment so you have to do an iotoplasty to actually improve the size of the iota so obviously this will mean that you have to protect the brain during the surgery so you have to cross clamp over there which will mean that this will be done on cardiopulmonary bypass you will need much more access so this will be often done to through a midline stenotomy incision so much bigger operation now if you think about the adult if you think about an adult with coarctation who didn't present till let's say 10 20 years of age who has got a minor coarctation there maybe there were some collaterals which was keeping things going you don't need to operate on them all you need to do is if they're hypertensive obviously you need to fix it so you would do a balloon and stent so you would do a stent to open that up so that would be done through a cardiac catheter done by cardiologist not the surgeon obviously it's much much less traumatic for the patient it could be done as a day case even so the approach the, the the severity depending on the severity and the age of presentation the treatment is treatment can be completely different now what are the long-term problems so you have a child with coarctation which has been repaired I look something like that so along the suture line you might get narrowing as they grow <clears throat> so if they become really narrow they will need ballooning and stenting so how would we monitor them? Again, look for radiofemoral delay. If there's a recurrence of radiofemoral delay, then obviously think about recoctation. Hypertension in the right arm. If there's hypertension in the right arm, obviously consider recoctation. Repeat a scan and then treat as required. Aneurysm at the site of repair can also be common. Then again, if it's aneurysm, the treatment would be stent or uh, surgical repair, depending on the case and severity etc in a child or an adult with coarctation what are the things you might present with so they can present with leg pain this is due to claudication so they would typically complain of uh, pain in their calf muscles or legs when they walk and when they rest it will get better when you examine them you get radio femoral delay you will get weak femorals you would get increased blood pressure or hypertension in the right arm so if you see that compare it with the left arm and see if there's a big difference if there is it's very likely to be coarctation diagnosis is with the help of echocardiogram if you do a chest x-ray on them it's not diagnostic but a couple of things which are usually mentioned once rib notching so the rib notching is due to collaterals. We said that if you have a coarctation, which is 
in a child or an adult they might often have collaterals so these collaterals can press on the rib and cause rib notching so watch for rib notching and obviously other thing you would have would be a large heart on an x-ray because obviously remember the left ventricle is having to work harder to push past this obstruction so the LV would be thickened so you would have uh, some cardiomegaly on the x-ray if you look carefully but those two are not uh, diagnostic so th those are the things to keep in mind when you're uh, uh, thinking of diagnosing cooptation in a child that brings us to the end of the talk hope you uh, found it useful thank you for watching